Hello, my name is Nadine and welcome to Hop Along Studio. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you how to use your art journal with some stencils, embossing paste, embossing glazes, and embossing pens to create a very simple art journaling project. So let's get started. So to start with, you need to choose some sort of paper. You want something that is fairly smooth, something that will take a fair amount of water and medium. This is a 100 pound Bristol paper that I'm using in this particular book. I like it because it is fairly smooth and I do like the results in this sort of application. So the next thing I'm going to use is my Crafters Workshop stencil. I'm lining it up a particular way because I do want this area here available for text space. So because of that, I'm actually lining it up a little bit further to the left than I normally would, just so that I actually have this space in here to do journaling. And I'm just going to be using a few pieces of masking tape just to hold this down. It's going to make the next step a little bit easier. Where I can, I like to secure my stencils. It does make this process a little bit easier. And in this case, I have decided that these little um, kind of garland bits in here, I don't necessarily want them in my image. So I'm actually going to cover them with tape as well. I'm going to be working with medium and medium is sometimes a little hard to control. So when it comes to this type of application, sometimes I just cover up what I don't want. And that way it makes it easy to make sure you end up with with the images you do want and if anything you want to omit, you don't have to worry about having little bits of paste in places you do not want it. blocked off all the spots that I don't want to have paste through and I've actually secured my stencil in, into place. The next thing I'm going to do is start using these Dreamweaver metallic copper and metallic gold embossing paste. These things I've had maybe about 10 years and this one is starting to get a little bit chunky uh, as it dries out but this one's still quite good. So what's been nice about these is compared to regular mediums they do not dry out quickly. And because of the fact that I don't want to make it, I would like to kind of alternate the, the metal colors, but in this case, I'm going to choose certain ones that are going to be the bronze and other ones are going to be the gold just to make my life a little bit easier. So this is a bit thicker and a little less smooth than it usually goes on just because this, this particular paste is getting older. If you ended up with a new thing of this particular paste, you would find that it probably is a bit smoother and a little bit better, a little bit easier to work with than this particular one that I am working with right now. Because I've been working with mediums a long time, having something that's a little less forgiving is okay because I, I do know how to handle it. But paste are one of those things that take a little bit of practice, become really good at. They can be a tiny bit unpredictable. also a little harder when you're working these spots that are not perfectly flat which is another reason to try to have your stencil secured quite well and you might have noticed that I covered one of these that I wanted to have with the gold with the with the copper so what I will do is actually go over it with a little bit of the gold and hopefully that will put whatever colors on the surface working a little bit better. And then you don't actually want to cross contaminate. So take a baby wipe or a, t a paper towel and just clean off your palette knife and then go into the next one. So you can see with this one, the consistency is a little bit smoother. It's a little less gloppy. This is again, not drying out quite as quickly as the other one is. It's also a lot easier to get that nice fine coat. So it's something to be aware of when you buy paste. Definitely try to think about how much you're going to use them and what you're using them for. So for example, like I use a lot of golden paste and and Liquitex paste and I really like them but for a lot of people who are maybe doing more art journaling or crafting you may not need that much medium in that case I would suggest going for a ranger paste it's not as 
cheap per milliliter, but at the same time, if you're not using a lot of it, it makes a lot more sense to only buy what you're going to use because this stuff does dry out over time. So the idea that this stuff will last forever, it's a little bit different that way than dealing with inks that really don't seem to have much of an expiration date. You always just can use a re-inker to get them going again. And then we will, and then I will pull off the stencil. So take the tape off. You want to make sure you actually wash this right away. If you don't, you may end up with a bit of a mess that will not come off your stencil. <laughs> the stuff does dry fairly quickly. So there you go. So this is how you add paste through a stencil. Again, you want to make sure you have a nice thin layer. You can see a few spots where I have a little bit more thicker and thinner areas. I may come up with a palette knife. I may just leave them as it is. I'll see kind of as things dry what I kind of want to do with it. So the next thing you want to do is add your embossing powders on top of this. I really like this look, but I'm actually going to go a little bit deeper with trying to add more interest and different colors to this. The reason I chose this particular medium was that I wanted something that had already had a metallic in it, but then I could add other colors on top so it's not just a straight metallic, but actually has a little bit more color to it. So this is what's really great about the Distress Glazes. You are able to go a little bit further with some of these, some of these techniques. Because they are translucent, you actually get a little bit more variety in color and style as you go along with this. So I am going to, the part of the jars that actually have the light in it, I am going to do in this yellow. So you have to kind of think through what, what order you're putting things on. Because once it covers up some of the embossing powder, you can go through and add another color on top of it because it won't really stick. So in this case, I've been thinking about the fact that all of my lights on this side are facing downward so I can pour off my embossing powder in this direction. And again at this point we're not heat setting anything, we're just putting it on and letting it letting it letting the, the paste itself dry and then we will come back in and heat emboss later. So in this case, because I've already used the copper, I actually wanted to give us these top ones a look like they actually have some some copper patina on them. So I'm going to actually be using the pistachio, cracked pistachio, to do the top of these lights. It's going to be a subtle effect. You're not going to, it's not going to be crazy green, but it is going to add a little something something to, to what we're doing. And again, this is where we had to think about order because now that I've put the green on, I can now put the yellow and have it fall off that way. And that way we're not going to to change the color of what we've already poured embossing powder over top of. So again, you just have to think through about what order you're doing things in and then it usually works pretty well. What I really like about these powders is it really gives a sense of translucency because of the fact that they are, they're not opaque and they're not completely transparent because of the iridescent quality of them you get an opportunity to get a very different look than you would maybe from almost any other type of medium. The top of the gold ones, I thought maybe it would go for a little bit of the fired brick. but I really like the result of it and again I think part of this is having the time to go through the process of art journaling and having the time for self-expression where it isn't always rushed. Sometimes it's nice doing really simple projects but sometimes it's fun to actually play with things and kind of see where they can go. Because I missed that one in the corner. I'm going back and getting it. Now that I've done that I do have a little bit of excess powder that's just sitting on the page a little bit so Again, I come through with a paintbrush and I clean up what I can because anything that melts and stays on there is, is going to affect how your final product does because I do want to do something with the background after this. 
You don't have to get every little bit of it, but I think it's trying to get the most obvious things. Because really, because we're doing something with light on it, you could really say that those are sparkles and reflections from the lights. I'm going to lay this to dry. It's probably going to take an hour or so to dry to the level where I'm going to be able to heat emboss it. You just want to make sure the heat embossing powder is fully dry. And that's part of the reason you want to try to stick with that thin layer because the thinner the layer, the quicker it is to dry. So, so now that this is fully dried, you can tell by just touching it very lightly. Uh, it should actually, it shouldn't feel squishy or anything else. Basically the embossing powder is still sitting on the surface. And now we go and heat set this so that we can move on to the next step. So once you've heat set it, the thing you want to make sure to do when you are heat setting it is not to leave it on the surface too long because you'll notice that the medium underneath will start bubbling. But you can see that just by adding the medium, all of a sudden I've ended up with a little bit of like this kind of reddish gold color and then more of this straight gold color. And then on the ones that were more copper by adding that, that uh, embossing glaze, fossilized amber, you end up with different colors in the bulbs where with the gold as the base, you end up with a more straight yellow gold finish. And on this one, you end up with this more of this coppery kind of gold feel to it. So again, by adding the different embossing powders, you end up getting a little bit of subtle detail and change. You could technically do this work with paste or with gels, but at the same time, you would need to tint them. And I think part of the nice thing about the paste that I'm using is because they're already mixed and they're actually already a very deep color. It actually saves you some time and you get a little bit more consistent results. So again, there's more than one way you can do this. The question comes down to what do you have on hand and what you would like to try to use and try to play with to see kind of what results you can get. So the next step is to add in some additional embossing ink to some of these and start filling them in as well. So one thing with these embossing pens is I do pick up the color of the embossing powder even after it's been dried. So I'm just going to do the center of the bulbs to start with. I'm putting some highlights in in places. It's really good about this brush pen is it does get into a lot of these small spots where the bullet pen with the harder tip is going to have a little bit more trouble. Unfortunately, it does do some damage to your tip. So it's something to be aware of. If you're worried, if you're worried about that, maybe find something else to use or find a different way to apply it. But in this case, I expect that when I'm doing stuff like this, I am going to do a little bit of damage to my pen. So I don't, I don't get too fussed about it. And this is a way I can put down the embossing ink really, really quickly. And I'm not too sure what it is about this particular embossing glaze that it, that the embossing ink in the pen picks up the color of what's around it, but it just, it seems to. So kind of run with what is, not what, what would be nice to have. So now I'm going to add some more embossing powder to this. So in this case, I'm actually going to use the tattered rose. And that's why I only did certain areas of it because I really wanted to highlight certain parts of these images. And this is a way you can actually use this embossing glaze to layer. Another way you could do is actually probably by using pens and then using a transparent powder to try to get that sense of illumination. But I actually like using these powders and layering them. I just, I just find the technique gets really interesting and I think you get some really great results. And, and part of this is I like seeing how far you can take a technique or a product. That's just, that's just who I am. So there you can see it's kind of a pinky rosy color to it. And now I'm going to actually add a color in a bunch of the other areas, yellow. And what you'll notice as I've been, as I go about this is that it's going to make more of an orange color in here instead of just a straight pinky color. And so that was kind of the point of this was to try to add some variation in color. Once you've colored those all in, then we need to add more embossing powder. So I'm going back to yellow again. I'm 
Now I would like to actually start adding a little embossing powder to these areas as well. So I'm just going to try to use my other nib pen. So this is a little bit more detail. So this is where the bullet tip may be a better choice. And considering I'm not doing a, I'm kind of trashing the other pen, I'm going to just try to mix it up a little bit. So I'm going to add some of the red dressing powder onto these. The fired brick. And so for this last bit, like these came out fairly red. And I was hoping they're more of a gold red, but at the same time, I'm, I kind of like the contrast because again, it shows the detailing where the gold is and then where more of the red is. So maybe it's not perfectly realistic, but again, this is where creative license comes in. I think I use a cracked pistachio because usually copper, when it does get that patina, it goes more of a green color like this. So I have a little bit of that coppery with patina in there already. So I'm going to add a little bit of green. Okay, and I think these are a little too green and a little too red for my liking. So I'm going to start adding in a few more highlights. So again, using the bullet tip. In this case, I am purposely going to make some brown. By doing that, I'm actually just going to add green to the red ones and some red to the green ones because those are opposite colors on the color wheel, which means that they will create brown, which in this case is exactly what I want. Most of the time you're trying to avoid making mud, but in this case I actually want mud. <laughs> so as you can see, now the areas that were completely red are now a little bit more muted into that brown color, and same with those green areas that have some red on top of them. It isn't necessarily all one color or the other. The reason I wanted to actually not just use hickory smoke, which is a great color, was that basically I'm doing the background black and I didn't necessarily want to have too much of deep tones in here. I try to make this as, as vibrant and as translucent as possible. So the reason you want to do this first is if you actually did any of these embossing powders on black, you would actually lose most of the effect. The colors would not come through, it would not have that, that translucency thing that makes them so beautiful. So Instead, what I did was I did it on white with the intention of having black. And because any sort of watercolor paint or any sort of distress stains will resist against these areas, these areas you don't have to worry about them changing color. Instead, they're going to stay the color they will. And then anything that we add on top, we can just wipe off because it won't stick and it won't stay permanently. So for paints to use on the background, you have multiple options. I actually have watercolor paint. I also have Distress Ink Black Suit re -inker that you can mix with water and that could actually work as your background. There are also Distress Stains but I don't have any Distress Stains in the actual Black Suit color. And I also have these gouache paints as well. So watercolor paint is transparent. Gouache is basically an opaque version of watercolor paint. So I'm just going to wet my watercolors here my gouache watercolors that are opaque and I'm going to use it to to make this background. I generally like watercolor for its semi-transparency but in this case I wanted to go as dark as I possibly can. Bit of a pain cleaning up the areas around it so I'm generally trying to stay where I know the paint isn't going to cover up things, but again, at the same time, if you are not super good with the watercolor brushes yet, like, and again, even where these, these spots are where the, the lines are so thin, I can go in and wipe those up after this has finished drying. And again, something like this would work best in, in watercolor paper, but the interesting thing about watercolor paper and the distress glazes is that you do need to use a lot more just uh, embossing ink to actually get them to stick. I was playing with that earlier this week and realized that 
I love watercolor paper, but it absorbs so much of the embossing ink that it makes it a little bit difficult. Yeah, it mixes up embossing ink so much that you basically have a hard time kind of getting your image down. It almost like sinks into the surface of the watercolor paper, which is great if that's the technique you're going for. But in this case, I did actually want a little bit of dimension. So I'm dealing with maybe having slightly warped paper so that I'm able to do what I want to with this regarding dimension. I'm using Bristol board, which is 100 pound, which is pretty good paper. But it's definitely, if you're doing a lot of watercolor, usually the best thing to do is use watercolor paper. So notice I'm actually adding an ultramarine, a deep ultramarine blue in areas. The reason for that is ultramarine blue actually makes a a great kind of gray color as well. So in areas where I'm finding that I'm dealing with a little bit of these kind of gray areas that I'm not huge, a huge fan of, instead of going straight black, I'm just gonna throw a little bit of this ultramarine blue in spots and it's just gonna, it's gonna give it a little bit of subtle variation. And like the good way that it doesn't look like, oh, we're painting blue on top of black, but it's more You'll, you'll notice it as it kind of melds with the, the other colors gouache. What's interesting about watercolor when you work with it is because it always rewets, the nice thing about this is again, you can, you can start with black and then you go, okay, well, this isn't totally doing what I want it to do. So you can add in some blue and you can kind of mix those colors together. And so you, again, because of the rewetting of, of the paint, it, it allows for some really neat stuff. So why the black? I've been thinking a lot this week about everything that's been going on in the States with um, the death of George Floyd and, and the other things that are going on. And I, it's almost like if the pandemic wasn't bad enough, now we're adding a lot of this other stuff onto it. And, and that's not trying to trivialize what happened to him, but it's realizing that like, you know, the pandemic hasn't necessarily made all of us better. So in some cases, it's, it's made people more paranoid. It's made people act worse and it's it's not okay and and i think i've been just trying to figure out like how am i going what's my reaction towards what's going on i am i am not okay with the murder of mr floyd i am not okay with how it was handled by the police i am not okay with that i honestly believe that we need to be standing up for people that are marginalized in our society and that we need to try to seek justice for them I think it's also important to understand what their personal experiences are and that we take time to listen and to understand. And so for me, it's been trying to figure out like, well, how do I react to this? And I know there's a lot of people doing stuff on social media and I think it's great that they are. There are people up protesting, protesting and, and good on them. And, and to be honest, I've been having my own conversations with people about things and, and it is good. It is, it's important. I, I don't think any of this stuff should be trivialized as non-important or, or whatever. But at the same time, it's like, I believe we all have our own ways of dealing with what's gone on. And, and for me, to be honest, I, I do totally believe in people protesting. I believe uh, in peaceful protesting, I should say. I am not into violence. I don't believe that it solves anything. And especially when violence is committed against a person, I don't think by adding violence to violence, it's going to solve anything. I think it's just trying to figure out like how, how do we move, move to a place where we can help those who can't, can't help themselves or marginalized in society and don't have the rights and freedoms that they really should have living in, in the country. And being from Canada, I think maybe the attitude here is a little bit different. Like, yeah, we have our own issues and we've had our own, our own problems with things. But the question comes down to, like, how do we act well to this? How can we learn from this and, in a way, make it better for those around us? So I've been thinking a lot about the idea of, of light and dark and about how do we be a light in a place of such darkness. So first thing I do is I have this kind of transparent light that I want to make a slightly different color so that it matches what I'm doing. So I'm just basically 
throwing some paint straight on these letters. step is to add our lettering and our phrase even in the darkness the light shines through so I was using gray letters to represent darkness just because I already have a black background and I am using the altered gold letters to represent light and in between these I'm going to actually be putting some jelly lettering that I'm using my own hand for to attach these letters we're going to be using PPA ArtQuest matte glue. This glue dries clear and it has a very strong adhesive. The nicest thing about it is be if you have a little bit of glue come underneath the letters, you won't be able to tell in the final project once everything has dried. <music> So there you go. So after you have attached the letters, which will they take a little bit of time to dry, my paper buckled a little bit, so these are going to have to, I'm probably going to put a weight on them as they dry to make sure they do stay in place. But you can basically adhere your letters, put in the rest of your lettering, and there you go. So yeah, even in the darkness, the light shines through. That's been my thought a lot with everything that's going on. So I hope you've enjoyed this project and enjoyed this video. If you have, if you could like it, subscribe to my channel and click the notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. As well, I do have a website, hopalongstudio.com, where I have lots of other creative inspiration for you, as well as mental wellness ideas for how to live a purposeful life. I hope that you have a really great week and I will see you next time.